I am at the Taj Hotel in Dubai. Now, the Taj is an Indian brand of luxury hotels that I did not get the chance to stay in while I was in India. So, hopefully now, here in Dubai, I will get the chance to experience some good Indian hospitality and cuisine. Surely they've got some good desi grub in this place. Let's go in and check it out. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm checking in. Very well. You've been okay. Hi. Okay, good. For your good health, wealth and prosperity and all the good wishes, all mm. the good blessings. This so is what, what is it you're burning? So it's, it is called in, in, in Hindi language, it's called diya. Ah, it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's made of cotton and then we put oil and then we light it. Mm. So this it gives a nice smell and also it's for blessing as well. Yes, exactly. Ah, okay. exactly. It's an Indian nice. way of blessing ah, our okay. guest. Thank you so it's much. It's the first time I've experienced it. It's very nice. <laughs> All the good blessings and we wish you a pleasant stay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Next, you can drop yourself. Yeah, I drop from Fajera. From Fajera. Next time you give it to, to our valley, sir. Ah, okay. Oui, oui, oui. I like to self park because then when I want to go, I can just go. I don't need to wait for. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Just need to swallow. Swipe it here. Up in here and okay. Three. Okay, fantastic, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. Three one oh five. It looks like I've got a high floor here. Four floors from the top, so I should have a nice view from the room. Okay, next room should be my one some lovely horses on the wall and hopefully a lovely room my expectations are high for this place let's go in and check this place out oh some nice flowers on the floor they smell nice as well getting some good smells in this place uh okay right here there's a place for me to oh dump off my worldly possessions oh that feels a lot better that feels about 15 kilos lighter <laughs> I'm carrying all, all sorts of stuff with me like this that are useful. A couple of USB ports in there. It's been useful to me. Okay, let's check this place out then. Oh, it's a big place. It's a big room. And what is this? Some sweets for your man? Oh, wow. And some biscuits and some fruit. And what is this? Some baklava and dates. Oh my God. I'm spoiled. What have we got here? Coconut ladu. So these are, um, this is Indian sweets. I know what ladu is. What the f That's me! It's your man! What the what? What is this? They've got pictures of me! This is me eating mutton, mutton, uh, What? This is me eating mutton biryani in, uh, Kolkata. And this is me eating fire pan. These are my latest vlogs on, uh, Oh my god! How... Okay, so they were expecting me. I've just ruined, I've just, <laughs> I've just ruined their beautiful, uh, I'm taken, I'm taken aback by it. That's the first time I've ever experienced anything like that in a hotel. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Uh, what else? Oh my God, two cans of Coke Zero. Are you serious? Courtesy from Concierge. How did they know? How did they know? <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth James. Thank you very much, Kenneth James. That is amazing. And what is this here? It's like an iPad or something? I think this is like a uh, like room service menu, but it's like an electronic thing. Oh wow, this is incredible. Let's check out the view. Let's check out the view of Dubai. And, oh wow. One of the world's most iconic buildings right there and the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, right there. This, this is gonna look amazing at nighttime when it's all lit up. I'll try and remember to, uh, continue the vlog at night and yeah I think this is going to be beautiful wow so yeah we're right there that's the Dubai fountain right there that must be Dubai mall so almost walking distance I don't know if it's actually possible Dubai's not really set up for pedestrians I don't even see like paths across there probably have to take a taxi all the way around or something but we're very very close to Dubai mall Burj Khalifa Dubai fountain right there very convenient location anyway uh yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm really astonished by that, seeing my own photo on the bloody sweets. What? I can barely believe it. I can barely believe it. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's a really nice touch, isn't it? So some nice, everything kind of like Indian style decor. The art on the wall as well. Very, very nice. Uh, big comfy bed. Usually all this stuff, I just get rid of it. Uh, I just 
like the bed nice and simple. Uh, this thing as well. Big massive TV, some, what do you call them, vases? Anyway, let's check out the bathroom. So we've got right here, a massive bathtub and that looks gleamingly clean as well. It's like marble as well. Let's go and check that out. Let's take a wander around here and check this out. Wow, look at this. That is real marble. That is thick real marble. How elegant is that? And at night time, it's going to be possible when all that's lit up, the Burj Khalifa and stuff, I'll be lying in the bath with that view. With those curtains wide open, surely nobody can see in that far, or maybe they can. Maybe there's somebody living in the Burj Khalifa, 60th floor, spying on me in the bath. Oh well. Uh, absolutely massive mirror. Everything gleaming thick marble as well, no expense spared, look at this. this. It's not like imitation or it's not like a layer on the top of marble, it's just a thick slab of marble. Uh, a little scale there, and this should be the shower. Oh no, it's a separate toilet area. That's nice, because you know, like after eating Indian food you do a big doo-doo in there and you don't want it stinking out your room, you can just close this. Perfect! Absolutely perfect. And this, a separate shower. I do like that as well. I do like when you have the separate shower from the, the bathtub. Anyway, mini bar. That's always an important thing. In Dubai for about the last year and a half since the Rona started. This is the mini bar. Yeah, they don't provide anything in mini bars in hotels. It's against the law. They have to leave the fridge empty. But, I think you guys know, if you've seen my vlogs before, what's about to happen. That fridge is about to get filled up by your man's own mini bar. Let's do it. I think it's only fitting when you stay in an Indian hotel that you bring your own Indian mini bar. That's why I've got all this. These badam drinks. These are like almond milk drinks that are made in India. And yeah, one with chocolate, cardamom, rose. Pretty sure that's going to taste like a Faluda. And saffron. And then these snacks. Because the supermarkets here, they're full of all this kind of stuff because so many Indian people live in the UAE, that they have all the snacks imported to provide for them. So I've got this sweet bundi, that's made from basin, that's the chickpea flour, sugar, cardamom, ghee, cashew nuts, raisins and sunflower oil. Uh, some gin jelly balls, and some katha mitha. This looks like the belpuri I was eating in Delhi, but it's not belpuri because they had another one called belpuri. This one, uh, chickpea flour noodles, rice flakes, green peas and peanuts. So, yeah, your man's gonna get fat eating all this. Uh, fortunately, we've got the sugar-free Coca-Cola. That's what we need. And right now, I've got a reservation for the Bombay Brasserie. Let's go and get that Desi grub. Okay, fourth floor. There is no four, oh there is. Bombay Brasserie. Hello. Hi. Namaste. I made a reservation for Dale Phillip. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Oh, okay, fantastic. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, I'll take this one then with all this stuff. Certainly. Wow, that's so much stuff. So what do we have? Here you have some basil chicken tikka for you. This, oh, this one's the chicken tikka right here? Yes. Ah, okay. With a marination of some basil and garlic uh, lime. Okay, let me have a look. So this is the chicken tikka, right? Okay. And then there's a prawn on top. Yeah. So prawn, which is a main dish of some yogurt and Indian spices. Yeah. Here you have your minted lamb chop. Ah, okay. Your mint sauce. Mint sauce. Here you have some scallop and S mushroom on top. Scallop, okay. Here you have your beetroot patchy sauce. Okay, fantastic. Looks amazing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Right, I'm going to start with this. Oh, that's absolutely massive. This prawn. This batty prawn. So I just googled the word batty, expecting it to tell me what type of spice it is that's rubbed on this, because it says batty prawn with a spice rub or something. But it turns out batty is a clan of Rajputs or something. Maybe it's the that clan of Rajputs. Maybe that was their favourite spice or something. But let's see if it's going to be a favourite of mine. Oh, 
I made a mess. My first bite. My first bite and... In a fancy restaurant and it's on the bloody floor. Sorry, I made a mess. My first bite, I made a mess. Sorry. I'll take care of it. Really? Oh, I'm so sorry. You yep. okay? Yeah. I'm all for you. And luckily, it's like a, a spice rub, not like a curry or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just I just brush that off. <laughs> okay, thank you. How about some this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I need it actually. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I feel like I probably need a bib like a baby. But, uh, okay, so yeah, uh, medium spicy. I'm feeling the spice, but I can handle it. And this prawn, absolutely massive. Absolutely huge. It's a two biter. Maybe a three biter if you count the, if you count the bite sized chunk that I fell on the floor. This is what you need when you eat spicy food. A few sips of this between bites. Right, let's take a bite of this lamb chop. A bit hanging off, am I gonna make a mess? Let's dip this in the lamb sauce. The mint sauce. Mmm. That's nice. This lamb is so tender and I'm not usually a big fan of mint sauce, but it's quite subtle. It's not overpowering or anything like that. So it is quite nice and barely have to chew it as well, it's so soft, it's so tender. Mm, lovely. Well, hands are messy now, I might as well eat the whole meal with my hands. I think you're supposed to eat all this with your hands, right? Anything at all Indian, I think it's uh, acceptable to eat with your hands. Let's do this. Oh, this is a chicken tikka actually. I thought that was more lamb. It's covered in the, the mint sauce as well, I think. Oh wow. And that is as tender as the lamb. Just soft, succulent meat. Delicious. Mmm. Lovely. Okay, the scallop. I've never heard of scallops being in Indian cuisine before. I don't know. You guys tell me, is this Indian or not? Let's see. Looks like there's some kind of Indian spice on it though, so... It's incredible and just as tender as the meat and yeah, it has some sort of masala rub on it. So nice and spicy and another uh, sip of the lassie required. I'm probably gonna need a, a second glass of this. And now for the beetroot thing. The beetroot what? I don't know. I think she said it was a beetroot parchy or something. I don't know exactly what it is. Is that a chunky beetroot or is it something that's covered in beetroot? I don't know, but it's a very, very fancy decoration. I almost feel bad about breaking this up. Let's see. Oh, what? This looks like some kind of, oh, making a mess. This looks like something, I don't know, like a, hmm. Tastes like cream cheese mixed with beetroot. That's what it tastes like. I guess this is something more that you'd want to spread on something. Maybe I should have been probably spreading that. This is more like I thought that was a chunk of something. Actually, this probably could have been spread on top of the, the lamb chop. and But everything's gone. I've nothing to spread it on, so I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> I'm just going to pick it up and eat it. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's um, cream cheese with chunks of, chunks of beetroot in it. Pink fingers now. I finished, but the beetroot thing—I was supposed to spread that on the meat or something, right? Ah, uh, yes, oh, I left it. I left it till the end. I thought it was like a chunk of something, so I left it to the end, and then it just like spread like a spread, and I was like, "Oh, I'm so stupid." <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe uh, next time you will come next time as well. Yeah, right? next time I'll come with more knowledge. Uh, yeah. Allow me to pay. Oh yeah, please. I can have another lassie as well. Of course, yeah. Lassie will fill up your stomach. So you yeah, but lassie—it <laughs> it balances out the spice. That's what I'm thinking about. Every time I eat something spicy, I take a little sip of lassi and I feel good. We did I feel have good. a refreshing drink, which is a watermelon. Watermelon? Yeah, watermelon, mint sauce. Ah. So it, it's also a very nice one. And then if you're looking for something sweet, we do have a rancha. Ah, I'm going to stick with the lassi for now. <laughs> Next time I will try the, the mocktails. Okay. Yeah. 
And this is medium spicy you've gave me, right? Medium. Yeah. yeah okay. If you want more spice level down, I can do that for you. Ah, uh, okay. I think I think it's fine just now. Yeah. It's fine? I'm handling it. I'm not sweating, so. <laughs> I've eaten uh, spicy food in India and I've been like sweating, it's been so spicy. Yes. But uh, yeah, I, I can handle like the, the medium here. So you're ready to have the main course? Yeah. Certainly. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Here you have rancha. What is it, rancha? Yeah, the same drink which I was asking you to try. Okay, you is that more of my mess? Oh, is that yeah. my mask? Yeah. Oh, my mask is covered in the mess I made on the floor. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. I have two more masks. Okay, this is rancha. Is this the one you said is watermelon? Um, no, so it's a guava juice. Guava. And some dash of lemon juice. You said guava and some kind of syrup? Uh, yes, rose syrup. Rose syrup, ah, okay. Please enjoy. Oh, wow, that's super sweet. There is a really nice rose flavor in there, but it doesn't taste like a falouda. It's like just way more sweet and it's kind of like sparkling. Wow, that is uh, that is off the chart sweet. Just uh, careful, it's warm. Warm, okay. Whenever someone tells me, be careful, it's hot. Be careful, it's warm. My first instinct is to touch it and see how hot it is. A little bit hot. <laughs> classic dropping the food. Yeah. Look, demand says it's a classic that I dropped the food. <sighs> Oh, is this my main? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Here you have some steamed rice. Some steamed rice. Some jinga alepi curry. Say again? Jinga alepi curry, which is a prawn curry. Alepi, alepi curry. Alepi. Ah, okay. Indian, uh, like from Alapoza? Yeah. Ah. Here you have your martaban kami. What is it's this? Lamb. Lamb, ah, okay. Here you have your spinach. Spinach. You have your dal makani, which is black lentils. Okay. And here you have some butter chicken for you. Butter chicken, wow. This is a lot. Right, uh, and Salted then. Bread, is this garlic naan and uh, lacha parata. Garlic naan and what parata? parata. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. Enjoy. It's like having a massive tally or something, but it's huge. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Wow. Check this out. Wow. I'm going to be stuffed after eating this. Absolutely stuffed. Let's start with the butter chicken. Let's mix this up. Oh, looks like there's two massive chunks, three massive chunks of chicken in there. I can see a lot of pepper. I can smell, I can smell the spiciness of that. I did say I was going to eat with my hands, but that's there's steam coming off that. So, you know, I don't want to burn my hands. Maybe when some of this cools down, I'll try it with, uh, I'll try eating it with the fingers. Let's give this a go. Some beautiful white chicken meat covered in the butter chicken sauce. Oh wow. That flavouring, that tastes like... In the UK, if you've ever eaten some crisps called Monster Munch, it tastes like the... Tastes like the pickle version of that, the pickled... <laughs> I think it's pickle flavour. It tastes like a bag of Monster Munch. But it's nice, it's delicious. Just reminds me of that. Mm. Nice and smooth and creamy as well. Guess that'll be from the butter that's in it. Guess that's how. I guess that's why it's called butter chicken. There's probably half a slab of butter in there. Wow, very nice. Mm. And this one here, I'm pretty sure, was the dal, black dal, I think, black lentils. So probably for this one, I'm probably gonna want to eat this with the rice. Okay guys, it is still a little bit hot, but I'm going in with the hands. Mix that up with the rice. Mmm, nice and mild, mild spiced dal. I'm going to try with, I think this is garlic naan, this one. Oh, it's nice and soft, nice and light. I think that will go well together with this dal and rice. Just mop this up. Mm. Oh, it's very nice, yeah. 
hopefully I can uh, get through all this. Is that thing I'll take to do for you? Uh, maybe you can remind me what these, these ones are, because my memory is like a fish. <laughs> so sorry, this is our spinach with a water chestnut. Spinach with water chestnut, ah, okay. Here you this... have your lamb curry, which is a martaban meat. Okay. And I... here you have your prawn curry. And it's a lepi, an alepi, alepi curry. curry. Ah, okay. Prawn alepi curry. Okay, Please, fantastic. Choose. Okay, so this naan, the garlic, it kind of just adds another level to the, the whole flavour and yeah, I think it's a good combination, the garlic naan, the dal and the rice together. Let's just take a wee bit off here. I don't want to eat too much of the bread, I want to make sure I finish all this delicious stuff. It would be a shame if I filled myself up with all that bread that's right there and then I couldn't finish this. My Aleppi curry and my lamb and spinach, gotta get strong like Popeye. Okay, spinach time. I was going to eat it on its own, but my spoon is all has rice stuck to it, so I'm just going to have to mix a little bit of rice in there. It looks like there's some peas in there as well. I see some green peas. Let's just dump that on the plate and have a go. Yeah, there's some green peas in there, and it's water chestnut. That's what these chunks are as well. So I'll take uh, one pea and one water chestnut. No spice to that at all. You wouldn't think you were eating anything that was Indian cuisine, actually. There's nothing to tell you it's Indian cuisine. It just tastes like, you know how spinach tastes kind of grassy? It doesn't taste like that. It's more it's more smooth. It's more of a smooth taste, more of a, a kind of spinach patty they've made of it. And then the water chestnut doesn't have much flavor either. So it's just quite a, I don't know, it's quite bland, but I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, it's just bland compared to all this spicy stuff. But it's nice enough. Mm. Let's go for the lamb curry. How many chunks of lamb do we have in here? I think it's like the chicken, there's three big chunks. And the curry, I don't know what kind of curry it is. I asked her like three times already. I'm embarrassed to ask her a fourth time okay, what kind of curry it is. So I'm just going to taste it and see what it's all about. Let's see this lamb. It's a nice lean part of lamb meat. You can see, you see there how white the meat is. So it must be from a very, you know, muscly part of the lamb. And uh, yeah, it's nice and tender. You can just see it just breaks up in my hand. Oh, wow. Not spicy, just very, more like a British kind of gravy, I reckon. Mmm. Oh, now I'm feeling just a little bit of spice. To me, that's like that's like having a lamb roast on a Sunday in the UK. Just the gravy's just got an extra bit of spice to it. Mmm, lovely. And finally, we've got the prawn curry, an Aleppi prawn curry. It is. Now, I didn't get a chance to go to Aleppi. Oh, I just dumped the full lot on my plate. I've got a feeling this one's going to be nice. I didn't get a chance to go to Aleppi when I was in Kerala. Apparently that's where the good backwater tours are. The houseboats and all that. I did a pretty substandard backwater tour leaving from somewhere near Kochi and all the Keralites told me I got ripped off. That wasn't the, the good one. Uh, let's see if this is the good one. The good Aleppi curry or not. There's five, five prawns in there. Not as big as that massive prawn I had for the starter, but five standard sized prawns in this very watery. Very, it's very, very watery gravy, this. Looks nice and light, just as well, because I've dumped the whole lot on my plate. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. This uh, curry is amazing. It is so creamy. I think I'm tasting a lot of coconut in there. It's reminding me a lot of uh, Thai food. This is like coconut creamy. Maybe it's, maybe it's made from coconut cream but it's just so creamy, so coconutty, and just a little bit spicy. It's absolutely delicious, and the prawns as well, they're just like, really tender and meaty. Mmm, okay. Time for me to just dig into all of this and get it demolished, guys. Here you go, Alapuza prawn curry. Get in my belly. Mmm. 
Oh, it's so nice, this Aleppi curry. It's my favourite out of all of these. I feel like I've still got a lot of sauce. I've eaten all the prawns. I've still got a lot of sauce right there. I feel like mopping it up with all that bread, but then I'm going to be too stuffed to eat all this. So as tempting as it is, I'm going to just skip the rest of this sauce and go for the rest of the meat, like this lamb. Oh, look at that. It's glistening, glistening. Tender lamb. Oh. Mmm. Cheers. Yeah. Butter chicken. Cheers. Mm. I'm starting to sweat a bit, so that means the spice is getting to me. Time to involve some of the, the writer into this meal. Mm. That really balances things out. Can you clear the rest? I'm not going to finish this. I'm, I want to leave room for the dessert. <laughs> what, how does this work? Okay, so you pour it over my hands. Ah, like this. Okay, so I don't have to stand up or anything. I can be lazy. Okay, thank you so much. It's very nice of you. Thank you. Okay. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be angry at me for not finishing my food. Please don't waste food. It's not our culture to waste food, but guys, it's just too much food, sorry. <laughs> I need to leave room for the desserts that are coming. So I've eaten all the most important parts, all the, all the meat, that's done. I've just left a bit of spinach and a bit of dal really. And then it's just the sauces, it's just the gravies. It's just kind of the gravies that I've left. Uh, yeah, so I haven't left that much. Okay, all the bread, yeah. <laughs> I'm just explain how wasteful I'm being, but it's okay. There's nothing much I can do. I can't make I can't make myself sick. Okay, so there's th three things coming for dessert, right? Uh, yes, so it's okay. mocha, frini, kajur, and halwa, and gulab jamun. Gulab jamun. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, so you see, guys, I gotta leave room in the Scottish belly for that. Do most people finish this, or yeah, they do finish it? Oh wow, I feel like a lightweight now. I did have breakfast two hours before coming here, though. That's my excuse. Yeah, I actually came here expecting just to only eat one thing, like I was gonna eat like a chicken tikka or something. <laughs> And then I was like, hmm, I seen that, I seen that set menu and it looked uh, appealing. How was the drink? The drink, this one's really nice. It's really super sweet, right? Super, super sweet. Just like the staff here, super, super sweet. <laughs> Oh, this is the matka firni, right? Yes. And this is my gulab jamun. Yes. And this looks like... Anguri rasmalai. Rasmalai, ah. And that's your fig and date halwa. Ah, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So this is... Halwa is just sweets. So that's just like made from figs and dates. I didn't know I was getting this. There was only three things on the menu, these three. So this is a little extra surprise. Luckily, I left the room in the belly. So this is a Ras Malai. I've had that before actually, the first time the first time I went to India I had Ras Malai. It's like a really, um, I think it's made with cottage cheese and it's like a really saffron uh, kind of like milk solution that it's in. So that's nice. And this Matka Firni, I ate at Chor Bazaar in Delhi on the street. That was the one that was 20 rupees and was delicious. Some kind of like... I called it like an Indian rice pudding at the time. It's made with rice and the gulab jamun. Lovely. I will start with the Ras Malai. There are four of them, but they're very wee and a wee spoon to eat the wee Ras Malai with. Oh, there's five of them actually. Let's just get one of these wee balls in my mouth. Don't you dare. Oh, wow just dissolves in the mouth, they're just, they're very airy. There's a lot of air in there, so, although they look very thick bulbs, they're, <laughs> they're quite light. Mm, no. That saffron milk is delicious as well. A nice dairy treat. And for the second sweet dairy treat is the Mac Cup Fernie, the Indian rice pudding. And this one, covered in chopped almonds and pistachios. Mmm, it really does just taste like a rice pudding with um, with saffron. Now for the gulab jamun. Now this is served warm, I can feel that it's warm. 
and that's how they're supposed to be served. Uh, it's just a ball made from milk, ghee, and I think flour as well. And it's soaked in syrup, like absolutely soaked in syrup. So let's get this big ball in my mouth. Mm. Again, just like the Ras Malai, it just kind of dissolves. Very little chewing, very little chewing needed. People say I don't chew my food enough, but when you come to places like this where everything's nice and tender, you don't have to, you don't have to chew that much. Okay, and I've got one thing left, which is the sweet. It's the halwa, she said. So halwa's sweet, and this one's made from figs and dates. Oh wow, uh, I don't like that. I don't like the, I think it's the taste of the figs. I don't like the anjir. I've had anjir coffee before and I liked it, but uh, I, don't, I don't like the taste of that. That's, it's not very nice, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish the, the ferny and the rasmalai. I'm gonna leave that since I'm wasting food, guys, since I'm wasting food anyways, and I don't like this. This is gonna get wasted, uh, but I'm gonna demolish this. Finish it off with some more sweetness. And that'll be me. <sighs> Benito, superb. So full. Yeah, I'm finished. This one I didn't like, but I like the rest of them. It's just, yeah, I don't know, I like the fig taste. I just, maybe it's just me. I don't just don't like the fig you know taste. Why? Yeah? Because it's healthy. Because it's healthy, I know. Let's see what the damage is. Okay, four, eight, five. Can I pay by card? Is that okay? Okay, I left you a little tip as well. Okay, see you next time. Thank you, goodbye. Oh, oh your man is oh, stuffed. Oh. Well, after eating a meal fit for a Maharaja, I kind of just feel like sleeping all day <laughs> on this comfy bed that is also fit for a Maharaja, but can't be a lazy bum, can I? I'm changed into my swimming trunks and the plan is to go out to, is it out to the swimming pool? Is it downstairs or is it, I guess it would be up on the roof, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I want to burn off some calories and then maybe I'll have some space then to eat some of this stuff, to eat my own my own face made of chocolate and actually there's a wee welcome note that I didn't read let's see what this says dear Mr Philip a warm welcome to Taj Dubai actually this person has got a name similar to mine Ranja Philippos very nice keep it in the family maybe that's what it is I'm one of them I'm one of them Okay, I guess it's going to be in the top. Or is it? No, the pool is down. It's three, I think. Pool here. That's not too bad, is it? It's just a wee swimming pool. But it does look quite nice. Just a few people chilling. Hello. Doesn't look that deep. Doesn't really look like one for swimming. It looks like more one for just kind of lounging around, you know. But uh, I'm gonna get in here and have a little dip. Maybe this guy can sort me out with a towel. And another section down there, I think that's for dining. Where are you from, my friend? I'm from Uganda, sir. Afghanistan, you said. Uganda. Uganda! I get, I get, you look more like Uganda than Afghanistan, <laughs> yeah, I think. More yeah. yeah, more, yeah. Well, it's not very deep at all. I'm kneeling right now. So, yeah, I don't know if I can do any proper swimming in here. I think it is just set up for kind of chilling. You can see here, there's like a pool bar. These kind of like stools here for people to sit and consume drinks. And yeah, that's how deep I am. So, hmm, I would have preferred the pool that I could do some real swimming in. Not that I'm a, a real swimmer or anything, but I'll give it a go anyway. Ah, 
it is possible to swim. Actually, it's pretty good because it's not really set up as a swimming pool. Nobody's swimming, so it means that nobody's in my way when I'm doing lens or anything. So, uh, aye, it is pretty good and it's shielded from, shaded from the sun, uh, as you can see here. It's that big building there, that, 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 just surrounded by buildings, apart from on that side, maybe in the morning or something it gets lit up, and then the rest of the time it's like shaded. So, nice. Nice for a pale Scotsman. I've just noticed, I didn't see it for this, but down here there's another wee smaller pool that nobody's using at all. I can have this whole area just to myself, just for your man. Doesn't look like it's closed off or anything. Maybe this is the kiddie pool. Is it even possible to swim in this? Let me see. Oh, no, I doubt it. It's below my knees. <laughs> it's below my knees. I guess this is just another bit for chilling. And I guess that's all alcohol over there. So it's probably to do these Dubai style brunches where you pay a set amount on a Friday or a Saturday and you can drink as much as you want. So this is probably what this area is used for. You can see all the liquors there. This massive bottle of goose. Aye. Quite a selection, isn't it? And nobody here to stop me. Nobody here to stop me taking any of it. <laughs> Your man doesn't drink. And there is a ray of sunlight coming from over there. So if you came here and you wanted to sunbathe, you would probably have to choose exactly, exactly that chair there. That one right there, otherwise you're screwed, you're humped. <sighs> Fortunately, sunbathing is not something I like to do. Ah, good. Just cracked open this rose. Oh, it's pink, pink coloured. This rose badam. And I'm going to try one of these eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one should I try? Should it be the chocolate dell or should it be pistachio delight? Fig and nut roll. I didn't like the fig that I had in that restaurant. So I guess it's going to be this, the coconut ladu. Now we've had ladu before and ladu is, it's just basically flour, sugar and ghee. But this one with some coconut. And a wee pistachio on top. Mmm. Yeah, it's nice. It tastes like a it tastes like a bounty. Have you ever had a bounty bar? You know that one that's desiccated coconut covered in chocolate. Tastes like that. And this badam drink. Mmm. Tastes like a faluda, just like I thought. And there are little bits of almonds in it as well. It's a nice texture, I like that. Not a lot of people like bits in their drink. You know how sometimes you buy orange juice, you can buy it with bits or without bits, and some people like it with bits. Well, I'm the type of person that likes my orange juice with bits, and I like this badam drink with bits of almonds. Very nice. Mm. Anyway, when I checked in, I asked the staff if they could possibly give me a tour of some of the sweets, like a penthouse suite, or I think they had one called a Maharaja suite that was like $3,000 a night, so... I asked them if they could give me a tour and they said yes, but then the restaurant was closing for lunch so I decided to do that instead. But uh, it's like 6pm now, it's about to get dark, this is all about to get lit up, which I will show you when it does light up. And I think I'm going to go down to the reception and see if that lady is still working and can possibly give me a tour of the sweets. Oh sweets, having a lot of sweets today aren't we? You are an Emirati man. No, sir, I'm Egyptian. Egypt, ah, yeah. okay. Egypt but, uh, is, I see you're wearing a kandura. Yeah. In Egypt, they wear kandura or? Uh, yeah, no, and already in other Egypt, there is like Saidi in Egypt, uh -huh. like uh, Sohaib City, Asyut, uh, Luxor, Aswan, uh -huh. wearing this uh, kandura. Ah. Uh -huh. But Cairo, Alexandria, Sharm el Sheikh are wearing like the, the Western Sheikh. clothes. Yeah, I've only been to Cairo and Sharm el Sheikh. That's why yes. I, did, I did not see uh, yeah. like this. Yeah, but when you go to Luxor, you found all the people already ah, wearing this kandura. Okay. I want to go to Luxor. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, Maharaja Suite. Let's have a look. Okay, so these are Maharajas, I think, right? Yes, sir. The original Rajas. And let's have a look. Oh, wow. Look at this bed. This massive four poster bed. Wow. Incredible. Look at this. And the sofa, it's a velvet sofa, right? This purple velvet. 
Wow. Incredible. A huge bathroom with a bathtub right next to the window that has the view of the Burj Khalifa. Wow. That's amazing. That'd be so good to lie in the bath. When this is all lit up tonight, which will be in like one hour or something, all the lights come on, these big buildings. And it also has shower. Okay, more nice decorations. That's the luggage room here. Oh, that's just the luggage room. Oh, okay, this is a very nice room. I will close the door. Oh, I'm thinking that's the, I'm thinking that's the whole room. <laughs> there's more of it, there's more of it. Of course, it's a suite. Oh, wow. So this is the living room. Wow. I mean, yeah, so you could be staying here and having guests over on a nice working desk as well. Right there. A dining room. Yeah, so wow, so the, the, it has a kitchen. Oh, wow. So how does that, do people, they, they cook their own food or they have a chef comes and cooks the food? And also separate the door. You, they have the two do in the so directly can go outside from here. Ah, so the, uh, the, this is for like a staff or something, like a, yes. she, a chef will come and cook yes. for uh, the guests and serve them here. Wow. In the terrace? Wow, they have a terrace. Oh my word. Wow. Look at all this space. They even have like uh, sun loungers, this kind of chair. Incredible. Then of the... Over here, lake, and you've got basically 180 degree panoramic view of Dubai. Right from there, the Burj Khalifa, Dubai Mall down there, and then all the rest of it. Wow, this is incredible. It looks like it's space for like a massive family, but there is, there's only one bed, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's for like a couple, for like, yes, a, yeah. For couple, and also if you want to do like a party. Yeah, ah, okay, so people d use this for a party. Ah, okay, I understand, that makes sense. Incredible. Wow. It's really incredible. Oh. So every floor has one suite? Yes, sir. every corner have one suite and all the suites have uh, one bedroom. Uh -huh. uh, except the presidential suite, which has two bed, two bedroom, which is an entire uh, floor. Ah, okay. So one one family will stay in this presidential suite, or something? Yes, one family because it's uh, one one room with uh, two uh -huh. beds and one room with the king bed. And the presidential suite, what is the the most time someone has stayed there? Has anyone ever rented it for like one month or? Uh, for uh, yes, we have uh, guests who stayed for a month. But ah, okay. very few. Yeah, because it's so expensive, right? How <laughs> yeah. much does it cost for one night in the presidential uh, suite? For one night, uh, the the, the, the cheapest went for 15,000 dirhams per uh -huh. night and the highest was like during the New Year's time, yeah. the peak season, went to uh, 23 to 28,000 dirhams. Ah, okay, so that's like uh, about $8,000 or something at the highest? Yes. Yeah, so about $8,000, about $8, wow. And this one, the... This is the Maharaja. So Maharaja, how much is that normally? Uh, so for the Maharaja suite, it's uh, approximately... Uh, in dirhams, like the lowest uh, rate, it, it goes to 7,000 dirhams, uh -huh. which is approximately $2,000. 2, yeah. yeah, and the highest up to uh, max, it goes to uh, 10, 10 or 11. Ah, okay, for New Year and yes. Eid, maybe Eid as well? Eid yes. Yeah, okay. And it depends on the demand more. Ah, okay. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. So this is the presidential suite we're going to see. Uh, this is the grand suite. The presidential suite actually is currently occupied. Oh, it's, it's, it's occupied. Ah, yes. okay. Good. Good for you because you're, yes. you're making revenue. That's good. I'm happy for you. I'm sad that I don't get to see it, but I'm happy. So the grand suite is uh, cost less than the Maharaja suite? It costs less than Maharaja Ah, and the grand suite, how much does it cost? Uh, for the grand uh, luxury suite, it's approximately 3,000 dirhams. 3,000 yeah. dirhams. Ah, okay. So maybe like $900. Uh, approximately. Yeah, approximately, yeah. Okay. So all our suites is mostly either occupied for uh, uh, families or yeah. guests who were coming for special occasions. Ah, okay, honeymoons and yes. things like this. So what is this so little room? So oh, this is the bedroom. Ah, okay. So it's a nice modern style, this one, right? So the Maharaja is like traditional Indian Tradition. style and the Grand is like a modern, like modern, modern yeah. elegant style. 
Oh, that's nice. This is a classy, classy TV stand here. Do, do they all have the view of the Burj oh, Khalifa? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, oh, they're all on this side. Uh, yeah, bedroom, living room, and bathroom. As yeah. Well. This is all on this side for the for the suites. Ah, and this also has the bath next to the window. Ah, okay. Very nice. And through here, a little writing desk. Ah, okay, and the walk-on wardrobe. Okay, for somebody with lots of clothes. Okay. Amazing. Oh, wow, that's a nice, a nice office desk right there. Oh, wow, look at this area. So this, again, if you have guests, exactly. you can have someone serving drinks. There's drinks in there? No. No, <laughs> okay. You have to bring your own drinks. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. Check it out. Amazing. Living room. In the living room, you get a view, yeah, of, view of the burge and a view of this side as well. Wow. So huge. Incredible. Very nice. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for showing me the sweets. They're very nice. Wow. Have you had any major celebrities stay here? Uh, like David Beckham or <laughs> anyone we know? Or is it, is it like you, you have, is it like you have to keep uh, privacy like this? Yes, we, we, you cannot tell me. We, we cannot, yeah, we had celebrities thing, but I cannot disclose. Ah, okay. <laughs> Some hotels, you know, in Europe, they have like a list of, uh, they have like plaques. They have like a list of all the celebrities that have stayed there, like, like music bands and everything. I stayed in one in Copenhagen and they had like, they would say like AC, DC, Elton John, like oh, this. They would keep a list of all, all the no, food. But we have our uh, uh, company policy. Is uh, for, for privacy, so for the Taj. Ah, okay. Or... I understand. That's good. Okay. But recently we had the cricket team was it wasn't so secret. Ah, okay, with well, the, the India cricket team. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Chennai Super Kings. Ah, that so they they, the last IPL. they, they choose the Taj yeah. because uh, it's an Indian hotel. Uh, yes. So they don't choose Oberoi, they choose the Taj. <laughs> Is it like a competition between Taj and Oberoi? It's like a big competition, the two luxury brands, right? <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, that's my floor. Thank you so Thank much, you so sir. Much. Thank you so much. Okay, brilliant. Those were nice, weren't they? Fantastic. Wow. Well, after checking out those sweets, I think it's time for some sweets of my own. Some that don't cost like $2,000. Some that are free, in fact. What should I try? Should I try the baklava? Or should I try the dates? I'm very partial to dates, and these ones are filled with all sorts of stuff. There's pistachio, something pink, something white. I don't know. What's that? Bloody knock on the door. I've got the Do Not Disturb sign on, what the heck? I'm pretty sure I put the Do Not Disturb sign on. I did, I put the bloody Do Not Disturb sign on, there, right there. What is the meaning of this, what is this? Room service? <laughs> Room service, come on, see you. You don't How did you know? the ordeal I went through to get that to you here. <laughs> really? How? What happened? Well I bought a Coca-Cola, yeah? and so I had Coke Zero, Coca-Cola, put them in my bag and it smashed against my GoPro and my battery and it went everywhere. Seriously, yeah. did you get it on film though? No. No, because it actually <laughs> smashed against this your GoPro. Oh, thanks very much. And now I've got an extra can of Coke Zero. Everybody's giving me Coke Zero today. No. You know what happened when I checked in? Coke Zero. There was two cans of Coke Zero right there. And <laughs> the guy says, compliments from concierge. Concierge. How, how thoughtful was that? Nice crew How thoughtful. Got here. Check it out. We're almost getting the Dubai skyline view lit up. There's a lot of glare here. I'll put the camera right up against. The window, I might have to turn the, the lights off in the room to see this, but uh, the, the buildings are starting to get lit up, I guess about another hour or something. Uh, yeah, so me and Luke, we're gonna go out and do stuff for his vlog. Yes. Um, so you need to watch his vlog if you want to see what we're doing after this, but when I come back guys, I will show you this all lit up. 
I've been talking about sweets. Do you fancy any yeah, sweets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you fancy a chocolate with my face on it yes, by any chance? I was hoping you Go eat me, eat me. I was hoping you were gonna- Eat me, that eat me. So eat me, eat me, eat me, go. I can, I can no, actually eat this. Yeah, eat it, go. It's chocolate, go. <laughs> He's gonna eat me eating biryani. <laughs> go for it, go for it, go for it. He just ate me. <laughs> I told him right, he, I told good. him to say, yeah. <laughs> I'll have the other one then. In fact, though, I'm oh, I'm pretty stuffed. I was gonna actually try some of this before before you came at one of the dates. I was gonna try this one with the pink, the pink stuff in it. I don't know what it is. I guess it's something else. Rose. I've been eating a lot of stuff with rose in it today. Your head tastes pretty good. I'm not. It's actually pretty good chocolate. Mmm. No, this is some kind of. Mmm. It's some kind of pink chocolate. No, it is rose. There's rose in it. It's kind of. It's like rose chocolate. It's rose chocolate stuffed inside the date. Fantastic. I'm gonna I'm, have my biryani. I've, I've had so much sweetness today, man. Okay, but everything I need. I've got my microphone thing, spare battery. Should I take my Coke Zero? No, don't be too much of an addict. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm trying to fit everything in my pocket so that I don't need a bag. So you can see two bulging pockets, but yeah, just less hassle. You don't have a bag, do you? Why do you I have used, a bag? I used to have a bag, but it got saturated in Coke. I, I walked it. <laughs> Oh, is that the same point you're talking? Yeah, tell yeah, me about I the Coke Zero. And I was like, all right, you know, I've got to, you know, bring you a present. Yeah. So I was like, I'll bring you a Coca Cola, but then I have a Coke Zero for me. Yeah. And I got stitched up, put them in my bag when I bought them at the bottom of the Mini Mart, and then chucked in my bag. It burst. It burst. Was, like on my portable charger, burst. Like, oh but it was my like, god. It was like it, I didn't, I didn't know immediately. It yeah. Was like very faint. And then, you know, I'm walking out of the hotel and then I just like stop feeling drooping. Oh, you're really dripping down your arse? Oh, seriously. Oh my god. So I need to really appreciate this Coke Zero. I've left like half of it. I've left like half of it. I need to appreciate this. So I had to, I had to get all my portable chargers, everything, my like GoPro charger, I, like iPhone charger. Yeah. Like, and scramble it back up to the ninth floor of this hotel, get changed. Oh, that's oh why I was, Jesus. Like, an hour late. <laughs> Oh wow, well So be grateful. I appreciate it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's do it. Well, it is about four hours later and I am back in my lovely hotel room after being out and about in Dubai with Mr. Luke. So if you want to find out what we got up to, you're just gonna have to look at his channel. And then you'll see uh what you're about to see is your man get in this bathtub, gonna fill that right to the top. I think there's some kind of molten brown shower gel or bath gel or something. Hopefully we can get all nice and bubbly. And I'm gonna turn the lights off and enjoy the sparkling lights from the buildings outside. Unfortunately, right now you get a lot of glare from this window. You see, it's like almost like a mirror when the lights are on in the room. It's almost like a mirror there. You can see your man, you can see the bed, the lights, everything more than you can actually see the buildings and the Burj Khalifa and everything like that. Dubai Fountain. So yeah, the plan is turn off the lights, fill up the bath, and just have a nice relaxing end to my first night in Taj, Dubai. Oh, oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh. Good morning from sunny and sandy Dubai. There's a bit of a sandstorm going on. I've just noticed that over there, that round thing. I don't know if you can see it right in the distance. I'm pretty sure that's the new cricket stadium. And just having a look around. They seem to be building something right there. And that looks like that's probably going to block the view of the Burj Khalifa for, for this hotel. It looks like it, doesn't it? If it's like about that height. Oh, I guess you can never really block the Burj Khalifa. It's always there's always going to be a bit of it sticking out. But anyway, it's ten thirty a.m. The buffet breakfast closes at eleven. So better make our way there. Third floor. Tree house, that's where we're having breakfast. Let's check out the gym.
Not too bad. Hello, is this for the breakfast? Yes, sir. Can I have a number? Uh, 3105. 3105. I'm not too late, right? No. They're still serving food for how, how long? Another 15 minutes? Or? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, I can just go? Sir, you have to go to the table, sir. Say again? I will show you the table. Ah, okay. Mr. Philip? Yes. yes sir. Okay. Is it a good morning? Is it Indian buffet or is it international or? The cold items, the cereals, you have your fruit platter, you have your uh, breads, everything, you'll get it over here. Okay, the, hot the food cold you can stuff. Order from the table as well. Ah, okay, so it's not like self serve for the hot stuff? No, you will order it, like we'll bring it from the kitchen. Ah, okay, a la carte style. Yeah. Okay, okay good. The table next to the window. Oh, fantastic, that's brilliant. Uh, could I have that one? Is it? Or, I know I won't take up five seats for myself. It's no problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So it's uh, oh, this is the menu. That's the menu, sir. So I can it's order anything. So you got. Food which we have to order from you. Ah, okay. And the cold food I can get myself. Okay, fantastic. Uh, can I have a tea, please? English breakfast. Yeah. Yes, milk, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we've got a choice of Arabic food. Indian. Ah, so I thought maybe it would be Indian, Arabic and Western, but you've got a choice here if it's like either Indian or Arabic. So yeah, there's paratha, there's uh, idli, dosa, all the usual upma, all the usual Indian breakfast foods. Maybe I should ask for one of each. One of each. I don't know if that's going to be too much. H how big are the portions? Because I was going to order a few things. Are they big? No problem. Sir. I'll make it like... Small. Oh, that's good. Sure. Is it possible to have one of each thing, but small? Yeah, sure. Which, which uh, order would you prefer to? All, all of them. <laughs> it's a selection of paratha, whenever you will have a... Ah, uh, oh, so you can just give me one paratha or something. Ah, uh, okay. the potato paratha stuff? Yeah, the, the aloo one. No, in fact, give me this, uh, the cauliflower one. Uh -huh. It's a gobi, gobi, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I take, and yeah, the idli, the, the dosa I will have with uh, aloo, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You want it on the side or inside? Uh, inside the dosa would be nice. Sure, sure. And then uh, the utapam and uh, the upma. I don't want to waste food, so make them very small. Oh, <laughs> I just yeah. want to. I just want to try the different ones. That's no. one, two, three, four, five different, five different choices. No problem. Thank you, Ranish. Shall I get some juices? For yeah, you? please. Uh, watermelon, watermelon juice, please. Sure. Okay, fantastic. And I will go explore the cold items. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Let's check out the cold items. Hi. Uh, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Let's check out what we've got here. Uh, all sorts of cheeses and salads and stuff. Good morning. How are you? Good. Great. See what else? Bread and toast. Okay. Looks like this is going to be dessert. I'll save this for dessert. A little donuts. Tiny little portions. That's good. It means you can try a bunch of different things. That's what I like. Variety. Okay. Oh, they have yogurt and stuff. Maybe I'll start with that. Oh, that looks really nice, that uh, muesli. Can you can you help me? Uh, okay, great. A bowl of muesli would be nice. You want to top it up with some berries? Or uh, so yeah, something sweet, like raisins or right. what do you have? Some nuts, uh, like some, some granola on top. Ah, okay. Uh, a little bit of granola and some of these uh, raisins, please. Wow, that looks amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow, looks like a nice start to the breakfast, doesn't it? Oh, fantastic. There we go. Oh, my tea is ready. Oh, lovely. Oh, a selection of fruits as well. Oh, that looks amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm gonna try this muesli with granola and sultanas. Oh. Mm. It's made with full fat milk, tastes delicious. A bit of crunch from the granola. Okay, what's uh, this is my dosa. I've got a lot of food now. Okay, let's put this one here, the dosa. And this is, it's the utapam. Ah, okay. 
Fantastic. Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, put this one here. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I've got a lot of food. I've got a feeling I'm going to be getting a, a row from some of you guys for wasting food, but I just wanted to try a lot of what they had on offer and all of the Indian stuff. There was only five things, so I wanted to try all of them. I just asked the guy to make them as small as possible. Mmm. This is lovely, actually. Really, um, the oats are all soft and the milk, and then you've got the crunchy granola on top, and then the sweetness from the raisins. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That is the idli, yeah. That's your cauliflower paratha. Okay, that's the cauliflower paratha. This is my idli. That's the uttapam. That's uttapam, yeah. This is my dosa masala. with uh, aloo masala. That's your upma. That's the upma? Yeah. Ah, okay. And I've got all, all the chutneys. It's coconut chutney and um, tomato. tomato chutney for all of them. And this one's sambar, right? Yeah, that's a sambar. With the uttapam. Ah, okay. So sambar with the dosa as well. Okay, fantastic. That's a lot of food. I'm sure you would have tried this in the Kerala as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. tried. I think I've tried all of this stuff before. So, yeah, it's all nice. It's all good. All good breakfast food. We'll look in the small dosa, smaller size. It's very thin, right? So it's... Yeah, it is. The more thinner, it's a little more tasty. Yeah, it's not... It looks like it's a huge, a huge portion, but it's Maybe very, it's very thin. Much. Yeah. Because he's from South India. Yeah, he's from Kerala. Yeah, he's from Kerala. Yeah. And a lot of stuff which is like... Eat, this is eat, very, eat, tip, very typical very breakfast. Ah, oh, okay. Very typical South Indian breakfast. But it's typical that they will only eat one or two of these things, not five. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a hearty, comfort uh, breakfast. Yeah. Just like a uh, high on carbs and for energy for the yes, day, right? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. So Looks amazing. Oh, thank you so much. The muesli granola is delicious, but let's get started on the Indian breakfast treats. Now we've got the dosa here. It looks huge, but it is very thin, very, very thin, almost like paper and just a small, a small aloo filling in there. So I should be able to demolish this one pretty fast. And I think coconut chutney is my favorite. It always was when I was traveling in India. So I'm probably going to take it with a coconut chutney. All the, all the things came with coconut chutney and uh, tomato chutney and two of them come with uh, sambar as well. So yeah, sambar is kind of like a, um, almost like a vegetable soup, but spicy. Okay, I've gone straight for the middle of the dosa, which has all the aloo filling. And I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna pour some of this on top. Some of the coconut chutney, a little bit more. Oh, there we go full of filling, full of coconut chutney, and... Mm. Wow, that is nice. They've made it not too spicy. Just a little bit of spice in the aloo. Um, I see some black peppers in there. I see some black peppers in there. I guess that's where the spice is coming from, but... Uh, oh, very nice. Especially with that coconut chutney. Never had a bad coconut chutney. There we go, again. Mmm. Oh, this is the last bite. Oh, dropping it on the table, as per usual. This is the last, oh. <laughs> this is the last bite with the filling and it's more coconut chutney than dosa. That's how much I love coconut chutney. Mmm. I forgot, I was supposed to drink this before they start. I didn't ask for it, but he brought it. He said it's like a morning shot. It's like to, to wake you up and give you energy. I think he said it was celery or something. Doesn't sound too appealing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the shot. Oh. Tastes like a, a mixture of celery and lemon juice. Uh, yeah, doesn't taste too nice, but it's healthy, so. I'm glad for it. How is everything? 
Oh, it's very nice. Yeah, the dosa was nice. It's like perfect portion size, just about that much filling. Yeah. And this one is the utapam. I've had this in Delhi and it was really nice. It's like a rice flour pancake and there's a lot of vegetable ingredients in there. A lot of onion that goes into it. There's a little, uh, some chopped uh, leaves, some chopped tomato. Looks nice. And this one I think is best taken with the sambar. So here's the sambar right here. It's kind of like a vegetable broth, but spicy. So let's just dip it in like this. Whoop. Mmm. The rice pancake, it just soaks up the, the sambar and then it tastes delicious. Just like if you were eating a vegetable soup in Britain, you would get some like crusty bread or something and dip it in the soup. It's like that. It just soaks it up. And it's a, a very kind of salty, savory taste and just a little bit spicy. Here we go, like that. Mm. Okay, going for the second one. And I feel like this is quite a healthy breakfast, you know? It's just rice flour and chopped vegetables and then you're dipping it in like a vegetable broth. So, yeah. It's a healthy start to the day, more healthy than most Westerners have for their breakfast. Like most Westerners would be eating like, I don't know, pancakes with bacon, like flour, like wheat flour pancakes with bacon, or you know, a bowl of crunchy nut cornflakes with milk, something like that. This is a this is a healthy start to the day. Mmm. And delicious. And delicious. It's not often that the delicious food is the healthy one, but here it is. Mm. Nice. Let's try a bit of this fruit. It looks like dragon fruit on the end there. This one. It's really nice. It's like a really soft, sweet fruit. You barely have to chew it. It's really nice. Mm. Okay, I'm going for the idli now. Idli is a very simple food and easily digestible, so Perfect for first thing in the morning. And I'm gonna try this with the tomato chutney just for variety. Ordinarily, I would just be hammering all the coconut chutneys, but I wanna try it. It looks like a, it just looks like a tomato soup, doesn't it? The uh, tomato chutney, let's give this a go. Mmm. Oh, spicy, spicy. So it's just, um, to me, it's almost like uh, dipping white bread into like a Heinz tomato soup or something, except the soup is spicy. That's what, uh, that's the nearest thing I can compare, compare it to. But again, I think this is made from rice as well, so a lot healthier than eating white bread. Mmm. Nice. Ah, next I'm going to try this upma. Upma is made from semolina, so about everything I've been eating is made from rice. And this one, a little bit different, made from semolina. So, I guess my instinct is to reach for the fork. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to go at it with the hands, guys. So, so there you go. It's like, what does it say on the menu? Actually, I have a description: dry roasted, dry roasted semolina, and there's uh, mustard and curry leaves in there as well. So there you go. I'm expecting this one to be spicy with the mustard and the curry leaves. Uh, let's try a bit first without, oh, it's, it feels very dry. I think it's gonna need the sambar, not the sambar. Uh, it's, they brought it only with uh, coconut chutney. I guess that's what it goes with, the coconut chutney. You see, as I'm grabbing it, it's just, it's just kind of like crumbling up like that. It's not like the, the pancakey type stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get right into the coconut chutney, make a right old mess, get it right in my hand and, mmm. Oh yeah, it definitely needs that coconut chutney. I can feel it's kind of like dry, because it's dry roasted, right? And then, it needs that to balance out the texture, the uh, coconut chutney, but it's nice. Not, not as spicy as I thought it was gonna be. None of this has been really spicy. You wouldn't want really, really spicy Indian food first thing in the morning for your breakfast. Just a little bit of spice to enhance the flavor, it is nice. And uh, that's exactly what we've got right here. Let's get nice and messy. A load of coconut chutney with this. Mmm, superb, superb. Mmm, 
Oh, fantastic. Uh, this this pickle, is it? This that's one? That's a pickle. It's and this one's what? It's a sweet oh. pickle that's a spicy mango. Oh, so it's like a mango pickle. Yes. Ah, okay, it looks like, it's more like a mango jam or something, something sweet. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, fantastic. Okay, so the pickle, I've never been a fan of the pickle, but every time I've taken it, you guys have told me you're putting too much of it on. It should be taking like wasabi or something. You just put a little bit to enhance the flavor. Normally I've taken like a big chunk and then I've been like, oh, I don't like it. So I'm gonna try these two things. But first I'm gonna try this paratha on its own, this cauliflower paratha. I we suggested I take the aloo paratha, but you know, I had aloo with the dosa, so I wanted to go for cauliflower with this one. And cauliflower is something that's used a lot in vegetarian um, Indian cuisine. You know, you might have just a curry that's just made instead of meat you have cauliflower and yeah it's a healthy thing to eat cauliflower so uh let's go for it on its own without any any condiments mm. it's very smooth there's no chunks of cauliflower in there so the cauliflower it must be like crushed or blended or something like that in some kind of like masala mixture again it's just like a very low spice masala uh, not overpowering or anything like that, but it's nice. Uh, I'm gonna try it with, should I be brave and go straight for the pickle? Oh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the thing is, it's like, the, the pickle, it's like a big thing. I think you have to crush the pickle, or I think you actually have to just crush it up and take a little bit. Okay, let's just take a part of this and, no, see, it doesn't break up. It's like this big chunk. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take it as the big chunk. I can't break it up. Okay, let's take it as the big chunk. Oh my God. Yeah, see, like I can't break it. It's just, it's really hard. Uh, I don't know what it actually is. Is it like a part of an eggplant or something? I don't know. Okay, so here's the big chunk. <laughs> really, I can't break that up. I could probably use a knife. In fact, I'll do it. I'll, I'll break it up with a knife and fork. I was trying to eat all this with my hands, but I can't, uh, I can't break this up with my hands and I'm definitely not gonna eat the whole chunk because that will be a disaster. And it would be, I think, the third time. And yeah, you don't want to make the same mistake three times. Okay, I've chopped it in half. It's just a wee bit now. So a wee bit of the pickle and a wee bit of the paratha with all the, you can see all the cauliflower uh, mixture there. Okay, let's see this together. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, well, that's, that's way too much pickle. I need to, yeah, next time I get that chunk, it's like not even a half, not even a quarter, I think. Oh my God, nothing to drink on the watermelon. He brought me another one, thanks. Oh yeah, um, okay. Well, let's try with just a tiny bit, in fact. So this is half, this is half here. I'll chop it in half again and then half again. So it'll be like one eighth. Okay, that's a quarter of the pickle. And here, that's not even one eighth, it's maybe like one tenth, okay? So I'll just try this tiny little bit. I can't imagine I'm gonna like it. I just don't like the flavor, to be honest. So I've just put one little bit on top of the, the paratha. And what else have I got here? Okay, I'll, I'll just try this for now. Did I get it? I can't even taste it. No, I didn't get it. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, that is better actually, that is better. It just gives it a little bit of a vinegary taste. Mm, I could do that, I could eat pickle. I could eat pickle in, in very small proportions, like, like wasabi. If I maybe just like dip it a tiny bit like that, like you would maybe, I don't know, dip a little bit of wasabi on your sushi. That's nice, that's nice. Finally, finally, I've eaten pickle successfully. Now, what was this one? It was like a sweet chutney, you said, a sweet um, a sweet mango chutney. Like, um, or sweet mango pickle, I think he called it. So this is like, um, if this is pickle, this is gonna be like vinegary again. It looks more like to me like a like mango jam or something. Let me just give it a wee taste. Oh. Oh, that is so sour. There is a bit of sweetness in there, but it's like 20% sweetness, 80% sour. Mmm. 
Okay, I'll try it. I'll try it with a paratha. Definitely not something you want to eat on its own. Definitely something for just adding a little bit of flavour to your paratha or something. I reckon. Okay, so I'm taking like one wee chunk of mango with a, a big piece of the paratha. Mmm. Oh yeah, that is nice. I'm, I'm tasting more of the sweetness now. Mmm. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Give it a wee dip. Mmm. Mmm. Now let's be very brave. Let's take a little bit of both. Oh, there are little chunks in this. This part does have little chunks. I didn't have to break up that big, that big chunk. So I'm taking like a little, a little part of the uh, pickle and a little part of the mango pickle together. Mmm. That's pretty nice actually. Wow. I'm actually eating pickle and I'm actually enjoying it. Now that I'm doing it the correct way. <laughs> now that I'm doing it correctly. Mm. This paratha's nice. It's nice and toasted on the outside. Uh, nice and crispy. And then the inside you've got that soft mixture of the cauliflower. Dipped in a little bit of pickle. Mmm. Nice combination of textures and flavours. Lovely. Enjoying this. Really enjoying it. Last piece, and last piece of the mango pickle. Oh. Ah. Okay, fantastic. I think I'm gonna to have to go back to bed right now. Thank you so much, thank you. carbohydrate overload but I really did enjoy that breakfast and it's good because normally breakfast buffets I'm making them at the very last moment you know I'm not that great at waking up in the morning uh, so normally I'm getting to the breakfast buffet right before they close and the food's all stale they're not refreshing it because they're about to close and everything but this one being an a la carte buffet fantastic just beautiful fresh food and delicious. Uh, anyway, it's like 1 p.m. right now. I can't stay as comfy as this is. I've got four pillows right here. This big, soft pillows, as comfortable as I am <laughs> in this bed. I'm meeting Luke in about half an hour. We're going to go snowboarding. Yes, in this boiling hot country. It's like out there, it's like 40 degrees or something. Uh, it is possible to ski and snowboard. So. I'm going to do that and I'm 50-50 about whether I'm going to vlog it or not. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I want you guys to watch me just falling on my bum about a dozen times. Um, anyway, this hotel, do you think it's worth it? $200 a night, I'm paying. Um, I think you can get it as cheap as maybe like $150 a night. You just wouldn't have the view of the Burj Khalifa and you wouldn't have breakfast included. Uh, the rate I chose includes the breakfast. So $200 a night, do you think it's worth it? You're right in the center of Dubai, you're right next to Dubai Mall. Beautiful view, all the amenities of a luxury hotel, the friendly staff and everything. I think it's worth it. I mean, I'm only staying here a short time. If I was staying in a hotel longer, it would be more like, you know, $40, $50 a night hotel, just need the basics, you know? But uh, yeah, it's nice to have the luxury experience. Every now and again, but oh, I'm actually getting my oh, lazy ass out of bed to end this vlog <laughs> with you guys. Um, yeah, thanks for watching from the Taj Dubai and I'll see you on the next vlog. It might be snowboarding, it might be something else in Dubai. See you guys.